Hi, my name is Hadi Lisha, interventional cardiovascular specialist, recording the first episode of the peripheral series on June 12, 2021. This peripheral series stands for Peripheral Interdisciplinary Physician-Led Educational Rounds for Amputation Prevention and Limb Preservation, and it's destined for endovascular education on cardiovascular interventional techniques. The first episode uh, deals with below-the-knee chronic total occlusion crossing, uh, through a complex case that I performed a couple of years ago. Uh, this case is uh, right lower extremity critical limb ischemia with a non-healing arterial ulcer with prior necrosis of the tip of the right first toe and duplex arterial ultrasound showing evidence of obstructive iliac inflow disease and infrapopliteal disease. This was the ulcer involved, which um, is perfused by the dorsal metatarsal branches of the dorsalis pedis artery but also uh, sometimes from the medial plantar branches of the posterior tibular arch. It's a kind of a com combined angiosome, the DP and PT. Question number one is what access site would you adopt for this case? Since there was a uh, right inflow disease, iliac inflow disease, and the patient had renal insufficiency with limitations of uh, large contrast administration, we decided not to perform a CT angiogram for planning and count only on the duplex arterial ultrasound and go straight for an angiogram since the patient had Rutherford class five um, uh, arterial insufficiency symptoms and signs. Uh, so a retrograde left common femoral artery access was adopted with an up and over technique. Um, even though the large majority of these cases are actually accessed from an anti-grade right common femoral or anti-grade right superficial femoral artery access for multiple reasons. But uh, we knew that uh, there, there are limitations to the up and over approach, especially with the distance uh, uh, that is required for distal infrapopliteal interventions, the lack of torque transmission, the, uh, the diminution of the vector of force for crossing uh, proximal caps, uh, but in this case, the uh, your iliac inflow disease was a limitation. But we were pleasantly surprised that uh, the duplex ultrasound was falsely positive. The delayed waveforms were artifactual uh, in the right common femoral artery and right external iliac artery, and the right femoral popliteal segments were also relatively free of obstructive disease. But of course, there was triple vessel infrapopliteal occlusive disease with an anterior tibial artery occlusion after severe osteostenosis with heavy calcifications and uh, reconstitution from collateral flow from the perineal artery, which is itself chronically occluded and reconstitutes through bridging collaterals from the tibial perineal trunk, which was patent. Of course, the posterior tibial artery was also uh, chronically occluded in this case. This is a very frequent everyday practice case. So in the process of anti-grade wiring uh, with an 018 CXI microcatheter and the command ES014 wire, which crossed very nicely the proximal stenosis, but definitely went into the subintimal spaces um, uh, around the proximal cap as we encounter frequently in daily practice. So what are, in this case, uh, what are the other alternative uh, approaches to cross this current total occlusion? Uh, the first one is anti-grade dissection re-entry. Some of the literature comes from the chronic total occlusion coronary literature, whereby a wire uh, of specific characteristics um, is advanced from the anti-grade subintimal space and back into the true lumen. It's not a very frequent way of crossing. It can happen sometimes with the infrapopliteal uh, space, but uh, less than other techniques. Retrograde access has become very frequent in CLI interventions, um, especially was adopted in this case also. And the wire can cross from a true luminal um, space to a true luminal space from retrograde to anti-grade um, uh, access sites. The third way is getting catheters from above and below and performing what is called the rendezvous technique where a wire is threaded from one catheter to the other from an anti-grade or retrograde access uh, followed by flossing of the wire uh, from both access sites. Um, a frequent technique um, adopted in the peripheral vasculature uh, 
is a CART technique that also comes from the coronary literature, which is controlled anti-grade retrograde tracking technique, whereby a balloon is inflated from retrograde axis um, and a wire crosses from an anti-grade to the retrograde uh, through luminal space. And a method that's even more frequent is the reverse CART technique, where uh, there is less advancement of gear from a retrograde approach, only a microcaster and wire, but the anti-grade access allows for advancement of a balloon, which is inflated, and then the wire from a retrograde access crosses into the true luminal anti-grade space while the balloon is being deflated. And finally, if these methods fail, uh, the advancement of balloons from an anti-grade and retrograde access sites into contiguous subintimal spaces and uh, getting the wire to cross from one space to another while the balloons are being deflated is another way to um, um, back up the uh, uh, crossing strategy. Question number three is, would you go with a sheath or bareback from the dorsalis pedis artery since retrograde access was uh, decided in this case? Well, it depends. Obviously, operator experience is uh, very important in these kinds of cases, but there are pros and cons to every approach. Going bareback minimizes the arteriotomy access site, but um, allows for um, um, advancement of the wire and the microcaster from retrograde access into the anti-grade space, then uh, the advantage is pulling the equipment out without any major bleeding or arterial access complications. The downside of this is that uh, if there is a lot of expected um, back and forth and manipulation of the equipment, there's a significant spasm that happens at the access side despite vasodilator administration plus the force of crossing is less important than if you have a sheath in. Placing a sheath allows for retrograde gear equipment and even treatment of the occlusion from a retrograde access if the anatomy uh, dictates that. But the downside is it is a larger arteriotomy site, which is predisposed for a little bit more bleeding, pseudoaneurysm, arterial occlusion, and dissection. Uh, the frequency of these are relatively low when in good hands, but uh, it is possible and becoming more frequent with more advanced CLI intervention. In this case, retrograde wiring was performed with an 014 CXI microcaster and a Gladius 014 wire, which could not cross into the true luminal space. So we used the re reverse card technique where you can see here a balloon inflated from an integrated approach uh, into the subintimal space allows the retrograde uh, gladius wire to cross from true lumen to true lumen. Now, uh, in this case, after the reverse card technique was uh, performed, uh, the retrograde wire was threaded into the anti-grade sheath and subsequently flossed uh, from outside the body from anti-grade to retrograde access site. So this technique is called Safari technique or subintimal arterial flossing with anti-grade and retrograde intervention, whereby a wire is crossing the retrograde axis back into the anti-grade axis, flossing the body from one side to another and allowing for a very good rail for advancement of a gear and interventional equipment, especially through the occlusion sites. And once the balloon is, uh, the balloons are um, passed through these occlusions, the wires can be pulled from the retrograde access site and the distal lumen can be rewired from an integrated approach like it happened in this case. So in this case, uh, after atherectomy and balloon angioplasty, specifically orbital atherectomy in this case, we had a, a satisfactory result on the anterior tibial artery. This was a 3.0, 200 millimeter balloon inflated uh, for up to five minutes. Um, and this allowed for adequate outflow into the dorsalis spiris artery, which had distal microvascular disease, but allowed enough flow to the wound and enough blush for adequate wound healing, uh, like you see on the last angiogram on the right. And of course, since we had adequate wound uh, blush from a dorsalis spiris artery circulation, uh, we did not feel that a, another extensive intervention on the chronic total occlusion of the posterior tibial artery is required. And this was actually encountered uh, uh, good clinical uh, healing with uh, this, this ulcer was um, 
This picture was taken three weeks after the intervention and subsequently the ulcer resolved in the next three months after the intervention. In terms of take home messages, the uh, crossing process and the chronic total occlusion below the knee interventions is a very dynamic process and one must be very flexible in the thought process depending on the feel of the wire. And moving from one step of the algorithm to another should be relatively quick in order to uh, be efficient in these complex long occlusions. But of course, this has to be well thought of uh, before the case and uh, plan A, B, C, and D has to be outlined in um, one's mind before tackling those tough interventions. And finally, the rendezvous technique in the tibial arteries is a little bit more successful in the infrapapoteal than the suprapapoteal segments, just because of the fact that the space is more limited and um, as the catheters are well aligned, uh, wires are more easily threaded from one catheter to another without the frequent use of uh, snaring techniques. Thank you very much.